Welcome back to Online Financial Foundations. In lesson number three, we are going to talk about getting an EIN. And if you have no clue what that is, stick with me. I am going to tell you. So in this lesson, you will learn what an EIN is and why you need one. I'm also going to walk you through how to apply for your EIN step by step. So let's start off by talking about what the heck an EIN actually is. Well, an EIN or employer identification number is basically like a social security number for your business. It's an identifying number that the IRS and other organizations use to identify your business as different than another business. Now, despite the name employer identification number, you'll likely want to get one of these even if you don't have employees in your business. So don't get too hung up on what this is called. In fact, some people actually refer to this as a federal tax identification number, an FTIN. Either term works for me. There are a lot of uses for EINs, but the three most common ones for our purposes are probably going to be opening a bank account, filling out business tax forms, whether that's an actual tax return or it's a payroll tax form or something like that, or withholding payroll taxes if you do have employees. Now, before I show you how to get an EIN, I want to just uncover a few EIN myths that I've heard that drive me bonkers. So EIN myth number one is that EINs cost money. I have met more people than I wish I could say who have spent hundreds of dollars getting their EINs. Let me stop you right now. EINs do not cost you money. It does not cost you anything to get one and it does not cost you anything to keep one. You can apply online for free at irs.gov. Now there are agencies and companies out there that will help you get EINs and they charge, oh, horrible amounts of money to do this because getting an EIN is actually a really simple process and I'm gonna show you how to get through it. So please do not pay someone to get you your EIN. EIN myth number two is that you don't need an EIN if you're a sole proprietor. Now, technically that's true. You're not required to have an EIN, but I think this is really bad advice that you don't need one when you're a sole proprietor because having, a sole, uh, having an EIN when you're a sole proprietor is actually really helpful for a couple of reasons, one of which is bank accounts, but the other is actually to have a bit of protection between uh, the public and your personal identifying information. So let me give you an example. Let's just say you're out there doing business and you are getting paid by people. You may be aware that at the end of the year, they may send you a form 1099 to report the money that they've paid to you in the course of doing business. You may be, maybe you've gotten a few of those form 1099s, right? Well, when you started that work with them, they likely asked you to fill out a tax form providing your identifying information so that they could subsequently issue you that form 1099. If you don't have an EIN, you're going to use your social security number. I don't know about you, but I don't want my social security number out there for everybody to see all, you know, with all these other businesses. So having the EIN is a great way to kind of create a little bit of a, of a cover on your personal identifying information so that when you are providing those tax forms to that person who's going to pay you, you give them that EIN. And when they give you the 1099 to report what they've paid you, it's it's using your EIN instead of your social security number. So I highly recommend it, even if you're a sole proprietor. Now, EIN myth number three, and I, I couldn't believe this one when I heard it, but I've heard it now several times, so I need to debunk it, is that you shouldn't get an EIN because once you do, you'll be required to pay quarterly estimated taxes. Y'all, this one makes my head hurt. And if you've said this, I'm not judging, we're here, we're here today to debunk this stuff, but this makes my head hurt because this is so far from the truth. Having an EIN does not mean you have to pay quarterly taxes, but spoiler alert, you probably have to pay quarterly taxes whether or not you have an EIN if you're making money in your business. So getting the EIN does not commit you to any additional tax liabilities that you didn't already have, okay? So debunk this one all over the place. Now, now that I've hopefully convinced you that you should get the EIN because there's really no downside, let's actually walk through how to do this. Now, you may wanna just pull up your 
internet right now and do this with me as I go through the slides or save these slides for later and do them on your own time. But it's a fairly straightforward process and it usually takes gosh, no less or no more than 15 minutes. And you don't really need that much documentation to do it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Step number one is you're going to head to the irs.gov website and search apply for an EIN. Now, sometimes this is actually a big uh, option right there on the homepage. It's not currently at the time I'm recording this, but it might be when you log in. So check that out. But if it's not there, Apply for an EIN should get you to the search page that we're looking for, which is step number two. Again, typically this will come up at the very top. It'll say recommended by IRS. We're going to click on apply for an EIN number online. Now, step number three is to determine your eligibility if you can apply online. Most of us probably can apply online. People who can't are folks who don't have any kind of a, um, uh, like a social security number or um, you know, identifying information in the US, but they can still apply by mail. So it doesn't mean you can't get one, you just have to apply by mail. So that first step is to make sure you can apply online. The second step is to just kind of understand the online application, which is pretty straightforward. The biggest point to make here is that you can't save the application and come back to it. So make sure you've got at least 10 or 15 minutes to go through it when you're ready to do this process. And then step three is to go ahead and submit your application. So that's the process. And once you are good with that process, you can click that blue button, apply online now. So step number four is to, be, uh, to click on begin application. This is a, a screen you'll see, um, which just tells you a little bit about the online application process. It'll tell you about any uh, restrictions. Again, if, if any of these apply to you, you may need to apply via mail, but for most of you, you should be able to apply online. Step number five is to choose your entity type. There's a whole list here, but for most of us, it's probably gonna be sole proprietor or partnership, maybe corporation or limited liability company, LLC. Now, once you've chosen your type, depending on the type you chose, you might have a few different options. So if you chose sole proprietor, then they're gonna ask you to choose between are you a sole proprietor or are you a household employer, meaning like you've got a nanny or a maid or you know, wouldn't that be nice, something like that. For Again, for most of us, we're gonna be choosing sole proprietor a second time here. And we're gonna click that continue button to go to the next screen. Now, if you chose, um, oh, sorry, one more step on sole proprietor. So the next step once you uh, confirm yes to sole proprietor is it's going to basically say, are you sure? And it's gonna give you this little blurb about, um, this is what a sole proprietor is. Please confirm this is definitely you. And I do just wanna note one really important thing here that if you can see it on the screen where it says important and bold, a sole proprietor may have only one EIN regardless of the number of businesses you own or operate. So if you are a sole proprietor who has a couple of different business things going on, just keep in mind you kinda of gotta use one EIN for all of them, okay? So assuming that this is matches what you are, you're gonna press continue and move on to the next page. Now, if you selected that you were an LLC, it's gonna give you a similar confirmation screen, but it's gonna talk about what an LLC is. And again, it's gonna basically say, are you sure you're an LLC? This is what an LLC is. Again, assuming that yes, that is in fact what you are, you'll press continue. Now, if you are, uh, if you chose LLC and you pressed continue, it's gonna ask you for some information about the LLC. So it's gonna ask how many members are in the LLC. Members are owners, for if you think about it that way. And it's also gonna ask what state the business is physically located in. So you're gonna answer those two questions, pretty straightforward. And then the, the next and final step of kind of confirming the entity type for the LLC option is one more time, it's going to ask you to confirm your selection. And the thing that's different here is they've now uh, added on whether you're a single member LLC, meaning there's one owner, or you're a multi-member LLC, meaning there's multiple owners. So again, they base that off of the number of members you entered, and they're asking you to confirm that that's correct here. And they're giving you a little bit of information about where you've got to file your taxes and things like that based on the entity, entity type that you chose. So you can go ahead and press continue here if that looks good. Step number seven, once we got through that confirming entity type uh, component, is to actually um, indicate why you want an EIN. Now the screen here shows sole proprietor. It's the same questions for the LLC option. 
And they give you some options here. Are you starting a new business? Have you hired employees? Is this for banking purposes? Have you changed the type of organization? Did you purchase an active business? For most of us, it's gonna be one of the first three. If your business is brand new, you're gonna click starting a, a new business. Uh, if you're doing, if your business is not brand new and you're getting this solely to open a bank account, you're gonna choose banking purposes, okay? So just choose the one that applies to your situation and press continue. Now, step number eight is to provide your information. And this does look a little bit different depending on whether you chose sole proprietor or LLC. So if it's sole proprietor, you're gonna enter your own personal information, your full legal name and your social security number. Now, don't worry. I know I said earlier that you know, having the EIN kind of puts up a wall so that your social security number doesn't get out there. It's okay to put your social security number here. This is so the IRS can verify that you are who you say you are and that they can connect the LL, I'm sorry, the EIN with you as the sole proprietor, but you're not gonna have to use your social security number anywhere else. So put that information here and then you're gonna check, I am the sole proprietor, unless of course you're having someone else fill out this EIN application for you, but presumably you're doing it yourself since you're watching this video. Now, if you are an LLC, your uh, information screen looks a little bit different. So instead of asking to provide your personal information, they're asking for you to provide the responsible party of the LLC. So typically the responsible party is probably going to be you. You're the one responsible for receiving um, you know, the correspondence and following up on issues and being contacted by the IRS and et cetera, et cetera. So this is probably going to be your information, but just note that it is technically uh, asking for a responsible party, not just your personal info. But same thing, you're gonna put the full legal name in here, your social security number, and then you're going to choose I am one of the owners, members, or the managing member of this LLC. Again, unless of course someone else is filling this out for you. So step number nine is to provide the location of the business. And again, this is the same, whether it's sole proprietor or LLC. And it also asks if you want your mail sent somewhere else. So note that you can put in two separate addresses if you need to. Step number 10 is to provide information about the business. And this does differ depending on the entity type you chose. So if you chose sole proprietor, it's going to ask if you've got a trade name or a DBA name. It's gonna ask where the sole proprietor is located, what county, what state, and it's also gonna ask what your start date was. You'll select the month and the year. If you're an LLC, your screen looks a little bit different. It's gonna ask for the legal name of the LLC. Note that it must match your articles of organization. It'll also ask if you've got a trade name or DBA name, but you only have to put that in if it's different from your legal name. And then it's uh, gonna ask where you're located, of course, but it also asks the state where your articles of organization are or will be filed. So make sure you put that in correctly. And then it asks your LLC start date. Step number 11 is to answer questions about your business. Now these are the same regardless of the entity type. They're asking if your business owns a highway motor vehicle with a taxable gross weight of 55,000 pounds or more. I'm guessing that's probably not going to apply to any of us, but it might. They're gonna ask if your business involves gambling or wagering, uh, if your business needs to file a quarterly federal excise tax return, if your business sells or manufactures alcohol, tobacco, or firearms, and if you have or you expect to have any employees who will receive forms W-2 in the next 12 months. Um, that last one, if you are going to have employees, you may likely need to check yes on this. If you notice that some of the words are underlined here, you can actually click on those words and they'll give you more information about the question. So make sure you do answer these correctly. Step number 12 is to choose the category your business fits into best. They've got a whole host of categories here from accommodations to finance to healthcare to manufacturing to real estate, and there is an other option. So if you choose other, they're going to give you some subcategories like consulting, many of us may fall into this, um, or uh, you know services, selling goods. So we may end up uh, clicking other and then coming into here, or if none of these apply, you can click other again and then specify your primary business activity. Now step number 13, we are almost there, is to decide whether or not you wanna receive your EIN confirmation letter online or by mail. I've always thought this was the stupidest question because we are doing this online, so why wouldn't you want the PDF right then and there so you can see your EIN? And by the way, even if you choose receive letter online, 
they're still going to send you the letter by mail also. Again, like I said, stupidest question, but I would recommend clicking receive letter online so that you can get the PDF document right away. You'll be able to see your EIN right away and you'll still get the letter mailed to you usually within four weeks um, of, of the application. So step number 14, last step, is to review all of your information. You'll, you'll scroll down uh, and press submit. Congratulations, that is it. Your EIN, if approved, will be provided on the next page. It should be approved unless there's you know, some issue, but I honestly don't think I've ever seen an issue come up. Go ahead and download the PDF with your EIN and save it somewhere safe for reference. If for any reason there is an issue and you don't get approved, it'll give you instructions on what to do next. And typically it requires uh, mailing in your application or um, calling to apply online. So your next action item is to gather any necessary documents that you need and apply for your EIN. And as a wrap up in this lesson, you learned what an EIN is and why you should get one and of course, how to apply for your EIN. So in the next lesson, you're going to learn how to set up your bank accounts. I will see you there.